PPI medications are one of the most commonly prescribed medications worldwide and this is given to patients who have acid reflux and what they do is they diminish the amount of acid in your stomach so they're lowering that quantity of acid so that when reflux happens you're less irritated your esophagus is less irritated and on the face of that you know sounds like sounds like a good idea except there are a lot of very serious side effects and I wanted to review specifically today the association of taking PPIs and getting infections so why would that be your stomach acid your stomach is a bag of acid it is designed to be such and why because when you chew and then swallow your food the first destination it gets to is your stomach and there are microorganisms there are bacteria there are viruses that can be in your food and it's not because you utilize poor hygiene they're just microscopic and they are present which is why mother nature made your stomach a bag of acid so that these bad guys could not survive and that's what we want of course so uh, stomach acid is actually one of our first lines of defense against both bacteria and viruses so of course when you're diminishing that acid you're more likely to get infections of various types and so I wanted to go <clears throat> excuse me I wanted to go through the types of infections so you would know what your what your risk factor is um, one of them is called C diff which is short for Clostridium difficile and this is um, a very dangerous organism it can get so serious it can be life-threatening so the symptoms of uh, diarrhea colitis which is inflammation of your colon but if you're starting to get some pretty chronic diarrhea you definitely want to be checked out for this organism because it can get out of control now of course the elderly are more at risk and those in hospital are more at risk and of course that makes sense but the risk factor is also very prevalent for those of you who have been on the PPI for what's considered a long time which is a year or more and those on high doses so either or so if you're just somebody who needed to really go to the max dose or a fairly high dose because you weren't getting relief and your doctor kept increasing the dose then you have that risk profile as well as somebody who's been on it for more than a year and I regularly meet patients who have been on PPIs for decades so being on it for more than a year is is not at all unusual unfortunately the other um, infection that you want to be aware of is called SIBO which is short for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth so what happens is that due to that decreased acid in the stomach bacteria survive then they get into the upper part of the small intestine which they're not supposed to and when they multiply there you can get bloating gas diarrhea and then also malabsorption of your food which is also coming about just from being on a PPI because you're not starting that absorption process in the stomach the other issue with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is is a down up scenario so I just gave you from the top down which is that due to the decreased acid bacteria survive and then they multiply in the small intestine which they're not supposed to do the the upper small intestine is supposed to be pretty sterile actually um, but the bottom up scenario has to do with the fact that being on a PPI offsets your microbiome the 40 to 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon that are very protective of your health very protective of your immune system those organisms get compromised by being on a PPI and also because then the good guys get compromised the bad guys are very happy they they multiply and they start migrating north as I say um, from your colon up into your small intestine so it's kind of bi-directional here problems from the stomach down creating the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth as well as from the colon up so um, my problem with 
if I could launch into the uh, conventional treatment of SIBO is, is a medication to kill off these bacteria. And, and if, if it's severe, we do that here at the clinic as well. I'm not saying that we don't, although we do a, a little bit more of a natural process. Uh, but it, if you haven't gotten to the root cause of why these bacteria are multiplying, of course, guess what? They're going to continue. It's going to continue to happen. So I've met so many new patients, you know, talking to them for the first time. And it's like, oh, I had SIBO. I, I got the treatment. It, it was better for a while, actually, but then it came back. Well, of course it came back because nobody got to the root cause of why it was happening. So that's, that's pretty critical. So keep that in mind. If, if you say, wow, I might just have to live on these drugs. No, you have to get to the root cause of why these bacteria are inappropriately multiplying. Okay. Um, the other interesting one is pneumonia and there's two types of pneumonia so one is a chemical pneumonia and that has to do with the acid refluxing up your esophagus and some of you have experienced this where it's it's getting all the way up into your throat and you're tasting it and if you happen to you know take a breath or cough or you can aspirate that acid and um so this is a chemical type of pneumonia because the acid inflames your lung tissues. And so you can set up for that kind of pneumonia. Then of course there's a bacterial pneumonia because of what's happening with the decreased acid in your stomach. Bacteria are multiplying in that upper part of your, uh, your stomach, your GI tract. And with reflux, with lying down um, to sleep or just or just lying down that your saliva the food is reflexing up your esophagus and again you can aspirate and now you can get a bacterial pneumonia uh, what else did i want to say about that uh, also swallowing problems so sometimes people with hiatal hernia have swallowing issues that and this can be from lpr which is laryngopharyngeal reflux this is where the acid gets all the way up into your larynx and pharynx your voice box and the upper part of your throat and uh, you're, you're feeling the the results of the acid there and that's particularly dangerous with this pneumonia issue because um, the acid does go so high up and tends to reside there People can have a chronic cough, they can be hoarse, they can have trouble swallowing again. And so easier to aspirate it that way. Or if you're somebody who regurgitates your food, you're having trouble swallowing, that can come back up, the bacteria are in there and you can aspirate. So there's a few mechanisms of how this can occur, but again, it's pneumonia and that can get very, very serious. So these are all the side effects. Um, Lastly, there's foodborne illnesses like uh, Salmonella, Campylobacter, Listeria, the classic food poisoning. And um, when you're exposed to this, what do you want? You want a great immune system, which means you know you're eating the food, right? It's it's tainted uh, for some reason, and you want robust stomach acid to kill this bad guy. But you're on a PPI, you don't have that, and now it propagates and, and you can be pretty miserable with the infection. So uh, again, who's at risk? Yes, elderly, yes, people in hospital, but yes, people who have been on the PPI for more than a year or at a, at, are at a high dose, and that can happen pretty fast. I've had patients who, who say, well, you know, regular dose, they upped the dose, they doubled the dose, you know, um, because they weren't getting they weren't getting the relief so uh, th this is a, a you know obviously it's a serious problem because you can get infections and those can sort of take off and and um, get out of control so you want to know you're at risk but more importantly let's get you off the PPI let's get to the root cause of why your stomach is getting compressed and having no choice but to take its contents stomach acid and bring them up your esophagus. 
Let's recall that the stomach is designed to be a bag of acid. It is that first place food goes. It's supposed to be a bag of hydrochloric acid. It's not supposed to be compromised. And so that affects malabsorption of nutrients. It affects your ability to get infections or not. It affects so many different things. So why can't we just restore normal function? We can. Now I'm not saying 100% of the patients we see we're able to get them off their PPI, but a very high percentage of which I'm very proud of. And it's the simplicity of where is that pressure coming from? We call it intra-abdominal pressure. Where is that coming from? What's the source of it? Identify, remove, and, and sometimes it's multifactorial. You know, there's a few different sources, but we identify, 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 remove, 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 and then all of a sudden uh, the stomach is relaxed again. It's not being compressed inappropriately, and we can wean you down and hopefully off your PPI. So that's how we think here, and, and that happens a goodly percentage of the time and it's very protective for you, not just that, wow, I don't have acid reflux anymore and I'm comfortable and I, you know, I can eat comfortably and I can lie down and all the things you can't do when you have acid reflux, but this cascade of side effects from infections that we've re reviewed today to heart attack, stroke, stomach cancer, dementia, there's a long list of kidney disease, there's a long list of side effects, uh, osteoporosis, uh, that really can be avoided by getting off these medications. So uh, I hope this was informative. I think it's very important to be prepared and know what the risks are so you can be uh, aware of them and not let something get out of control. And uh, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to increase our subscribers uh, so that more people can get exposed to this information. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who might be similarly suffering. And uh, I do really appreciate you and we'll talk soon.